Okay, I'm gonna jump us ahead to mitigating risk, but let's talk about patch latency for a moment. Um, so pat patch latency is a great way to measure your security metrics, whether or not you're patching quickly, whether or not we're patching quickly. Uh, inside VMT, they're usually about a week latency between the reporting of a vulnerability and we them getting a patch out the door. The question for most of you guys, if you're deployers, is you wanna know how quickly you're patching vulnerabilities, how quickly you're isolating, finding out they're there, and then fixing them. That's a really good metric for knowing whether or not your security and operations and development teams are you know, in synergy on how to approach security problems. Uh, so mitigating risk. Uh, the real goals for mitigating risk are awareness of the risk, uh, reducing exposure, diversifying the risk, and investing your resources intelligently in solving this. Uh, and ultimately be prepared because you know no matter what you do, you're still gonna end up one day facing a real problem. Um, awareness. These are the things that I'm mentioning for awareness as potential solutions. Auditing obviously works. We know this works. We know that s several of the contributing companies are doing their own internal audits and the, some of them are doing their own external audits. More of that is gonna be good for us. OpenStack Vulnerability Database is one of those things that I wanna do this release where I can take the OSSAs, the CVEs, the CVEs related to Python dependency sets and build a, first a database schema and then an API metric that will allow people to come in and do things like query based on a configuration of options to get the statistics they need and consume them in a uniform manner. This is all about enabling our, our community to share resources in discovering their own risk factors. Um, so better visualizations of Keystone and Trust and Horizon is something else I'd love to get to this release. I talked to a couple of the guys at Horizon about doing this. The thing is, is if you look at the quantum visualizations that we have, they're kind of great because they show how the network models exist to the users. When we start generating trust bearing certificates in Keystone, the problem is, is people need to know they're there. They need to know that they haven't expired, that they've handed one out to someone else. Going out of our way to make sure that there's a mechanism for the users to know what they've given away in terms of trust is important. Um, better supply chain security, things like PGP signing on PyPy, ensuring that our GitHub stuff is signed, ensuring that our dependencies, PyPy and GitHub are signed, Ensu ensuring that packaging maintainers at Debian, Ubuntu and Red Hat are all talking to each other and doing the same or similar things and ensuring that what they put up there stays being what they put up there. And of course, OpenStack security group participation, several of the members of that team are in the audience and they gave a talk earlier today that was undoubtedly awesome. Um, we need more people in that team. The reality is, is there's a lot of work to be done and not a lot of people doing it. The OSSG exists so that the community can get together and solve these problems and we need more participation. So hopefully that will help with awareness. Reducing exposure. These are some of the things that people do for reducing exposure. I'm not gonna claim that this is the right answer for any of you. The reality is, is you can do network isolation. That's something that's big. We, weren't, we at cloud scaling don't believe in network isolation at layer two, we believe in network isolation at layer three. Other folks, they need layer two. They need VPN tunnel endpoints as a service. So that's kind of, you figure it out on your own in terms of re reducing exposure. Uh, meta clouds are something that also are big this year apparently, OpenStack on OpenStack, being able to deploy different uh, security zone clusters. Air gapping you see for things like ITAR violation stuff. Uh, trusted computing integration, which is Eric Windisch's talk shortly after this. I think it's the last one of the day actually. Um, better CI gate checking for common vulnerabilities. We don't currently do much of that. We do some, we have some stack analysis tools in the CI process, but we can do it better. And that would be one of those things that we'll try and work on this coming Havana cycle. Diversifying risk is what OpenStack does really well. This is one of those selling points you can bring home and say, hey, cloud computing is designed for diversify diversifying risk. We've all heard about the puppies and the cows. And when you start treating things like cows, you don't care that much about them. So what you're really doing there is you're saying, I'm accepting the risk, but I'm pushing it across many things. And it becomes less overall risk. So the open standards, the federation, the regions, the hybrid cloud models, these are all designed to solve potential risk factors, including security risk factors. And the great thing about OpenStack's diversity is that it can be leveraged for that, in particular things like doing hybrid uh, hypervisor models, things of that nature. All key selling points. Um, so in terms of being prepared, it's, this is the things are gonna go bad. 
And the question is not ask why they go bad, it's how do you respond when they do go bad? And these are pretty straightforward. Incident detection. I uh, found this image online because I thought it was pretty obvious uh, that there's something going on with one of those houses. You can usually find an anomaly fairly easily when you have a very homogeneous data set. Clouds have homogeneous data sets. Should be easy to spot the one house that's, you know, a little crazier than the others and go investigate that. Um, so the first part of this is detection, right? You want to know when something breaks. We know about the risks, we accept the risks, and when the risks occur, that means that eventually we're going to have to pay the piper. And we plan in advance, we have procedures, you prepare, you have resources available. So, so these are some of the things that we can do to increase uh, intrusion detection capabilities throughout OpenStack, which is security APIs. Uh, we could leverage Solometer for that as an event logger. We could maybe mar measure Marconi as an option for event logging. These are things that we need to look into in these releases and make available. Precursor indications uh, are fairly easy and I'll get into that in a moment. External reporting um, is kind of important. We're, we're not reaching out enough to each other. We're not saying, hey, we had an incident. Here's what happened. Here's what went down. We need more of those uh, operations catastrophe stories and security catastrophe stories. We had a few of them in the operations manual this year. I hope you re read a few of them. We need more related to the security stuff. And there's security services in SAAS. There's a lot of companies that show up here now like Cloud Passage that have solutions that they can spin up inside of a SAS environment. And the benefit here with cloud is you can do things like set, set up a baseline image that does scanning and make it available to your users so that they can go audit as a service, audit as a service, audit as a service, and get some baseline metric for whether or not they need to do more work before they go into an actual manual audit test. So back to anomaly detection. The great thing about homogeneous environments is it's easy to see when something goes horribly wrong. This is from an old cluster I used to work on. And you can see there's a couple of things horribly wrong here just by looking at a histogram of volumes. You can see one, we probably shouldn't be looking at var lib nova instances in a histogram because it grows wildly and throws off things. And you can see that in the first couple. Uh, you can also see that there's no var log on four of the machines. How did that happen? Go investigate. We discover in that case that four of the machines aren't actually four of the same machines that they're supposed to be in that rack. So they're missing disks. So when they're auto-provisioned, they end up missing disks. Um, other cool stuff in here, you can see when var log grows uh, exponentially. There's not one in here, but we've seen it before where the var log histogram will start going batty on one of the machines. You know that somebody's either hammering an API on there or you're getting a lot of tracebacks in Python logging from Nova or somebody left verbosity on. Uh, one of the other cool ones in here, I believe, is there's a slash home. So one of the forward slashes is frequently large on one of these, or larger than it should be. And it's, uh, yeah, slash var over here is enormous on this guy. Um, so that was basically the result of an operations guy going into a machine and leaving a large number of files behind on a machine that he shouldn't have. So anomaly detection is very cool. We can do all of this with all the metrics we have available in Solometer. We can do this with libvert metrics. We can do it with Nova metrics. We can do it with Keystone metrics. So one of the things we need to do is share the tools to do that. We need to generate a area of a repository for sharing that sort of code and having that conversation back and forth. So I'll drop some more code during the year on Sextack and on GitHub related to that. Um, this is the important stuff here. Uh, incident response, uh, you guys know this better than I, you know, have a plan. Consumers must have a workflow that's known to be supported for response. Disclosure of breach and other issues should be planned ahead and don't panic. This sounds like this is all very easy, but the reality is if you've ever been mugged, or you've ever been in a car accident, or someone close to you has ever been attacked, you know that those first few hours, you're not gonna be thinking 100% straight. You're gonna do stupid things. You're gonna end up in the hospital being concerned about somebody else's well-being and you're not gonna think to call a lawyer. Having this stuff planned out ahead of time and having that bullet point list is super important. So plan ahead, think about what's gonna happen when somebody does break past your, your, kit, your hypervisor and starts owning your machines. How do you recover? What data do you pull? Uh, where do you put it? Um, and that's where we get into chain of custody stuff. This stuff's important. People who are deploying OpenStack today aren't thinking about chain of custody. They're not thinking about the real capabilities in terms of chain of custody. 
We can do things like snapshot an image, pull that image off, store it, keep it around. We can do things like move a VM into an isolated zone. But we can't do things like move an instance from one tenant to another. So how do your SOC teams get in to investigate other tenancies? Do they have accounts that put them in every tenancy? These are, these are interesting things that could be fixed. Um, oh yeah, the logging in one-way DMZ stuff, things like that are super important. Make sure that you have an audit log, an event log, shell log if you're that crazy. And it's one-way DMZ, non-accessible, always getting updated. Very important stuff. I think the RPC signing stuff will help a lot with ensuring event logging works better in OpenStack. And I think that's big stuff coming in this. Uh, I threw in a couple of awesome good reads in here. Um, and I don't know why it's not there, but I had, a, uh, I had a GitHub link to the JSON database of all the vulnerabilities that's available now. And I'm putting together more on Python dependency uh, JSONs as well. So that'll be on my GitHub, and I'll post that to SecStack and the uh, Simplicity Scales blog as well. So all of this should be available for download from Cloud Scaling and other places shortly. So I'm now in the QA period. Um, question and answers. Anyone have questions? Maybe I have answers. Or you guys have answers. So anyone? Dead silence. For the most part, we're not involved with tenant security guidelines. That's something that the, the vendors usually figure out for themselves. But as a component of that, they will ask us questions about how to implement their procedures. And I think that's kind of a problem. A lot of customers have this idea of, well, we already have these policy guidelines. We're going to follow them. We're just going to apply them and jury rig them to work with cloud. And that's not really the right way to do it. And that's why the government did things like FedRAMP. They went, well, we have all these policies, and they just don't work. So we need other ones that do work. So I think there's a, net, a larger national discussion that needs to happen about how cloud security models and policies do operate. I know FedRAMP's not a bad starting point and parts of NIST. NIST has a really great breakdown on security stuff. So I would say those are two good models to look at as a baseline if you need to throw them out to your customers. Um, that's what I got on that for now. Any other questions? So, Well, we're already discussing the VPN as a service stuff. I think networking wise, there's gonna be a bunch of really cool uh, as a service capabilities that are gonna really solve the problems of specific people willing to invest effort in them. But there's also you know, the money makers, for instance, like cloud passages style, where you download a, a baseline instance that they update the database on and do vulnerability checks. One of the things I'd like to do with the vulnerability database if we get it going is something like an automated check. -in. This is you know blue sky engineering at this point. No idea if anyone would ever even let me do this is do something like a state check inside of an OpenStack cluster. Do, hey, what have I got in terms of imports? We do this a lot you know, when identifying what API queries work and what don't. Uh, the clients do this a lot as well. So it'd be kind of nice if we could do a state check and say what versions of what things do I have plugged into when I do an import and go, let me query against the API and see if any of these things need an update. And then we could integrate that with Horizon or something and it could go, hey, you need to update Python dependency X because this thing has a CVE right now for this version. And if we could do more notifications in that regard, I think that would help out a lot. There's, the problem with OpenStack is it's too damn big. There's a lot of stuff going on there and people are having a hard time tracking it all. So helping to make that more common, community supported, I think is something that I'll be working on personally. I don't know what you guys want to work on and that's really the issue, right? It's open source. Yep. Is there yeah, we probably could actually. That's probably a good place for it. We could do uh, Tempest checks against the vulnerability database for dependencies. That's not a bad idea. That's something definitely worth looking at. Yeah. Very good idea. 
Any other ideas? Thoughts? Concerns? Well, it's 4 o'clock now, so I think we, we covered this fairly quickly. Uh, is everyone happy with where we are right now? Can I close up and head out? <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. It's been awesome.